coming live from an airstream somewhere in Tornado Alley, bringing you the people, places, and stories from the Panhandle to the Red River. This is your Only in Oklahoma show. Welcome to the show. We're headed up to Edmond for S'more Haunted Oklahoma with downtown Edmond's Ghost Walk. If ghosts don't get you, the state puffed marshmallows will. It's the worst part of s'more. I'm just saying. I think I'd rather have a brain freeze, and I just might get my wish with Monsters and Margaritas event going on at the OKC Girls Art School. I'm Brett. And I'm Harley. You want to try that again? No. Okay. I want you to chill with the cheesy intros sorry man i'm trying to make it fun you know halloween's fun and exciting and it's all ghouls and goblins and s'more s'more haunted oklahoma (laughs) come on i'm trying to you know i'm exploiting things that i don't like we've done it a lot on this show i'm not a huge fan of s'mores so i said s'mores again how many i hate i hate them so much i can't even freaking say it right how many c's are in the word s'more I don't know, but how many episodes are there left where I have to say it? I, I guess that's kind of by choice. Dude, it's fall. There's s'mores. S'mores. There's going to be s'mores. s'mores and more s'mores. So I'll just have to not, but I can't help it. They're having s'mores at the ghost walk. So you have to, you got to add in the fun, gooey, ooey, gooey stuff. Speaking of gooey, ooey. Yes. Dude, it's Taco Tuesday. Taco Tuesday, bro. I'm just going to say there is one thing that I miss about being at our previous studio. It's having access to tacos almost like hot and ready. Yeah. They were bomb, dude. That taco truck was like right there. It was like the scene in the fifth element where the, what was it, sushi truck came right up to his window and he got, he was eating. It's like that. Okay. Tacos. Ooh, but I'm going to share an opinion that's going to probably send the world ablaze. I don't like the fifth element. So I don't get the reference. Nobody likes you. Yes, they do. No, nobody. Very, there are a few. There are a few. There's about 200 and something that like me. <laughs> uh, we, I mean, it's, it's, you can see it. It's well documented. You can click here and it'll show you how many people like me. You don't like the fifth element? <sighs> you know, how are we friends? Uh, by chance, uh, it just so happened I got to keep you in the di- in the custody slash divorce. We have talked about the fifth element. I have a question for you. Yeah, can you tell me and the listening audience mm-hmm. <laughs> who painted the sixteenth shackle? <laughs> I was talking a little fast <laughs> before the show. <laughs> Because you were trying to hurry me, and I was like, hey, did they hurry Michelangelo when he was painting the 16th shackle? (laughs) And the answer is no. You don't hurry a masterpiece. But Taco Tuesday, it is Taco Tuesday. It is. So, What's your favorite? Wait, hang on. We got to talk about Taco Tuesday. You can't just, I miss the tacos. What's your your go-to taco? Mm, Carne asada. Okay. Yep, that's my jam. I miss their sauce. Oh. That sauce, you could drink the sauce. We may just have to take a road trip today. We might. I miss the taco truck. I miss... I just miss the hood. <laughs> I do, man. Those are my people, you know? I, I I just miss the hood. Well, today we are headed a little north of the hood. Of the hood. <laughs> to the beautiful city of Edmond, Oklahoma. Right, we get to talk to Stephanie Carroll with she's the executive of the Edmund Ghost Tours, and we're gonna talk to her right after this. Okay, before we go any further, uh where'd you get that shirt? You mean this custom designed only an okay shirt? Dude, the podcast is seventeen seconds old. The guys over at Master Threads printed them up for us. Well, apparently not us. I don't have a Only in Oklahoma shirt. Oh, did you not get yours? Oh, and apparently a hat as well, embroidered. How is this even possible? Brett, I'm just going to say that Master Threads is an Oklahoma-based company specializing in professional graphic design and embroidery. And apparently lightning fast turnaround. Absolutely. So they had made shirts for us in the past, back in the days when we were only international 
nationally award-winning podcasters. Mm -hmm. They nailed that order, too. Well, apparently, I'll have to call Jeff and the team at Master Threads myself to make it happen. But if you need local products from a local company you can trust, check out Master Threads at masterthreads.us. That's M-A-S-T-E-R. T H R E A D S dot U S Master Threats. Well, Oklahoma history was never scary until we started doing this show. And of course, we had to start it in October when everything is scary. And here to give us another walk into the dark alleyways and haunted storefronts of downtown Edmond is Stephanie Carroll. Stephanie. Hi. Hi. Welcome. Thank you. So, Stephanie, we all know 1887. Santa Fe you know, puts a foothold in Edmond. We've got the land run in 1889. Tons of history. Talk us through some of the history of Edmond. Well, Edmond kind of started as a stop for the railroad. So the first stop that we had was called the Summit. And basically that's because Edmond's kind of at a higher elevation than most of the areas around us. So trains would stop here, and the first family that we had located in Edmond was the Steen family, and they actually manned the watering tower for the railroad. And so the name change happened when Edmund Burdick rode the train into town. He was an engineer on the train. For some reason, they kind of liked the name Edmund, and it changed from Summit to Edmond. I mean, what's in a name? I mean, I kind of feel like you, you, you hit it right I know. <laughs> you hit the, hit the nail on the head. So yeah. kind of moving forward, I mean, obviously it's a it's a bustling time. The land run, everybody's trying to stake their talk about some of the, the darker points of, of Edmund history, if you can. Well, we had a lot of, you know, times they were putting up new buildings and things of that nature. Of course, that was a dangerous business. So some of the times, you know, accidents would happen and people, you know, lost their lives during that time. We also have a fun story with Carrie Nation. And in case you don't know who oh, Carrie yeah. Nation is, yeah. um, she was, you know, an older lady who wielded an axe and went around and she was going to stop prohibition. So she would come around. She came to Edmund looking for a bar or a saloon that she could chop to bits and really cause a ruckus, but really didn't find one. So there's some really fun stories about, you know, what it was like back in the times. And some of our settlers that sprung up businesses for downtown Edmond are part of our ghost tour. And so you get to hear their story and the difficulties that they went through. So there appears to be something that's slightly different from some of the other ghost tours that we've come across. Can you kind of enlighten us to what you do differently there in Edmond? Yeah, we have actual actors portraying characters at our at our tour. So we will actually have people that are dressed in costume telling their story of how they came to Edmond and the things that they did while they were in Edmond in their lifetime. But in the mix of it, we also had some actual ghost stories mixed in. And so those people also dressed in costume will kind of talk to you about either an, a ghost story that happened in their own home or their own business, or they'll be telling the story of someone else who's, who has actually given us the story. So whether you believe in ghosts or not, you're going to see some ghosts. That's, that's kind of what yes. I'm getting. Okay. Yes. So highlights, you know what, I know it starts on herd and a lot of people that are listening are familiar with the herd on herd. So they kind of yeah. know the area. Is that, is that the starting point? Where do you start? Where do you finish and what happens in between? Yeah, we start on herd and Broadway in front of the shaded and shouts building, beautiful old two story building. I kind of give you a little teaser to begin your tour. And so the tour guide will take you then actor to actor as they tell their story, it's about a 45-minute walking tour. It goes about two blocks to the south and then back up to the north in the same amount of time, and it lasts about 45 minutes. It's a pretty good tour. Adults really like it. Younger kids may get a little bored just from hearing the history and stuff, but I would say, you know, probably sixth grade and up, they really like the stories. Some of our people like to come whenever it's 6 o'clock, which is the first tour, and come whenever it's a little more light outside. And then we have some people that want to wait until like maybe 7.30, 7.45 tour because it's a little darker and a little creepier. Yes, I'm I'm all about ambiance and experience. And one thing that I noticed that you guys have, this is right up my alley, is a horse-drawn wagon with yes. s'mores. Now, can, yes. can I... Do I have to have a plus one, or is this something that I can do as a, just a, a lowly single guy looking for <laughs> You can do it, yeah. You can do it all by yourself. We do have people that come, you know, singles by themselves, and then we do have people that book like a whole entire group to come. But the horse-drawing carriage rides 
are provided by the Downtown Edmond Business Association. They are free of charge, and everybody loves to do those. It's kind of another cool factor of hearing the horse clomping their feet down the street right at dusk. So it's kind of a neat little feeling that you get. But at the same time, we also have a s'more fire pit that the Edmond Fire Department and the Police Department will be hosting along with some of our UCO students. And so you can go over there, kind of enjoy such a relaxing time and and have a, a little treat after your tour. You only do this twice this month on the 25th and 26th, right? Correct. Are you guys booked solid? I mean, is it? It fills up pretty quick. You, we have had to turn people away before just because it has gotten too full, and we try to limit our sizes of our tours so that way everyone can hear and get the same experience and not have to be crowded around someone. So if they do want tickets, it's probably best to buy them ahead of time. What What is the best way for people to purchase advanced tickets? Um, they can purchase them at Silverleaf Gems in downtown Edmond. That's at 15 West Campbell Street. And it is cash only. So the tickets are $7. Kids 10 and under are free. But you can buy one or you can buy 20, depending on how big of a group that you want to bring. Awesome. What's the best way for people to learn more about your organization and your event, Stephanie? I would say to go on our Facebook page. It's the Edmund Historic Preservation Trust. And then they can learn about the events, volunteer opportunities, and then things that we're just doing throughout the year. Obviously, the money goes back into the to the Preservation Society, correct? It does, yes. And we we use that money most of the time to help maintain the 1889 schoolhouse. It is the oldest territorial schoolhouse in Oklahoma. And so we're in charge of that. We kind of keep the maintenance up and do programming and things of that nature. So it kind of goes to preserve that. But we are working on some new, like, historical signage and plaques. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Well, Stephanie, we really want to thank you for coming on the show. You've been a pleasure, and uh, this really sounds interesting. Yeah, I'm, it doesn't well, sound scary. I think I can probably get on board with that. Would be great. Ride. We'd love to see you there. Oh my gosh, I, I may. Can I show up in costume? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can. We have actually had people show up in costume, so that would be great. Is that what do you call that? Is that a haunting or a ghost crash? If I crash the crash the ghost stories, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> if, yeah. If Iron Man, if a portly Iron Man shows up. It may be uh, a red flag, but, you know. Fabulous. Thank you very much, Stephanie. Appreciate you. All right, thanks. I'm sorry. Right after this shit is hilarious. So the truth is out. I've said it multiple shows where there have been s'mores. I don't like marshmallows. I would rather go head-to-head with the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man than to actually have a s'mores. That doesn't surprise me that you don't like s'mores. Why? It's all American. It's like the fifth element. Oh, it's not all American like the fifth element. I promise you, if you're out there, let me know. What do you think of the fifth element? Tell me the truth. And s'mores. We're going to have them both on there. Tell the truth. Shame the devil. That's how I was raised. So you don't like marshmallows. I I feel I, for you, I guess. Well, right. But I also don't like ghosts as much as I like history. So I guess it's it's a double-edged sword when you're going into these historical ghost walks. Because really, are you going for the ghost or are you going for the storytelling I think aspect? you're going for the experience, and I like it. I, I, like the, I like the people dressed in character. Yeah. I like kind of bringing the history to life aspect. I do, too. I think it's, a, it's a, an, an interesting touch. I know other communities do it, uh, but so few don't, and I think it's more engaging. It gives you a little bit more of a, I don't know, a trip back in time, so... And it's a it's a great benefit for the Edmund Historical Trust, and I think you and I may, might have discussed this in the past, but mm-hmm. even some of the larger cities have problems getting funding for um, historical societies. Right. They're spending a ton of money trying to get the old schoolhouse. It's the first schoolhouse, I think, in, in the state of Oklahoma up there in Edmond. They've been putting a lot of time, effort, and money into that and if you want to get involved we'll post a link in the show to uh let you get if you don't get to the ghost walk throw them some cash i'm proud of you by the way why for not taking the shot you know the oldest schoolhouse in oklahoma isn't that where you graduated from harley you're old i mean you have the beard to prove it you look wizened 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 like wizened? dumbledore like, a, like dumbledore <laughs> Hey, so even if I'm scared, it's for a good cause. But honestly, here's the truth, okay? I know there's been a lot said, and most of it's been me throwing myself under the bus. I'm more scared of, like, haunted houses where they jump out and grab you. I like the, 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 I don't know, I like the ghost story aspect where your your imagination is kind of what gets a hold of you. So I would do this. 
It's on my. It would be on my list if I weren't constantly doing this. Bull crap! I'm calling bull crap. That I'm that I'm constantly not doing this, or no, I wouldn't that do you're it. Too busy to go to. Uh, <laughs> they, that the only reason you're not going to a ghost walk is because you're too busy. It's because I'm too busy, man. I'm just stacked to the ceiling. Well, there is something that uh, you and I are not afraid of. Right. And that's margaritas. And costumes. Right. And we'll talk about that next. All right, six goes into seven. One is... God, I'm so frustrated. I'm scared to death. I'm an independent contractor, and I don't want to get punched in the jimmy by the IRS. Brett, why don't you give our buddy Justin over at the Holiday Tax Group a call? One of their specialties is tax preparation and planning. And then on top of that, if you have a run-in with the IRS, they're going to have your back. Perfect. But how do I find them? You can reach them at HolidayTaxGroup.com. And if the independent contractor thing works out for you, they also do estate planning. So they got you back on that one as well. Oh, thank goodness. Thanks for the advice. That's HolidayTaxGroup.com. Holiday with two L's. Well, there's a great event coming up October 26th from 8 to midnight. It's the Monsters and Margaritas 2019. It's year two. It's the second year going in. And it's an adult costume party, but it's an adult costume party for a good cause. For a great cause. That's the OKC Girls Art School. It's for a great cause. The OKC Art School for Girls. Right. But we will get back to that. Let's start with the actual event. Yeah, let's let's sell the margaritas. Let's sell the sizzle. Let's do that. First and foremost, adults only. Yes. 21 and over, kids. I mean, adults. <laughs> <laughs> so, apparently there is food, which I, is good. I think if you have alcohol, you must have food. Even if it's little finger sandwiches. I hadn't gotten to the alcohol part yet. Okay, I'm sorry. The, oh, God. So, they don't know that there's alcohol yet. There's drinks. Drinks. More drinks. And more drinks. And then, then a, bunch of drinks. a bunch of drinks. A bunch of drinks after that. Some spooky, spoopy musics. Dude, with the spoopy thing again. I'm, I'm trying to try a different Target demo. Our demo right now is like in the late 60s. Spoopy's a young word. <laughs> okay. Ugh. So speaking of drinks, yep. though, their signature margaritas. Uh, they have some very interesting themed margaritas. Mm-hmm. So you've got uh, starting off with the witch's kiss. Which seems to me like it would probably knock you smooth. It's an That's an adult. Party, so I can say knock you smooth on your ass. Let's just I say that. I think it might just kill you. The uh, next one up then is the zombie's brain. Mm, man, that sounds good. Sounds so good. But how many of them can I do? <laughs> <laughs> but then they've got a costume contest. Yeah, they're putting the gory in categories. Apparently, they've got most horrifying. I like this. It gets better. Most grand and least effort yet original. <laughs> Come on. I think I could do that one. I, I think you could. I could qualify for the last one. They also have some performers, and they had a whole long list, but some of the ones that caught my attention, Fire Dancers. Uh Uh-huh. Dude, I don't even know what that is, but I want to see it. Another one that popped out at me off the page was uh, Fortune Tellers. I am, I've never done a Fortune Teller. I'm scared to. I can't do even do it for fun. I'm afraid I'll find out the truth. There are a limited number of people that can go to this. It's a limited engagement for sure. There are a total of 150 guests. Mm Mm-hmm available to attend and the ticket prices may be considered a little bit steep maybe even scary <laughs> not really so a single ticket's 50 bucks no big deal couple's ticket 85 vip ticket is a hundred dollars that's not too bad and then they've got something they call graveside seating for eight vips for 15 hunsky 15 Hunsky. Hunsky. That's of one of those young words. Right. Mm, I don't know about that. Are you I, sure? No, if you were saying this events the shiznit, maybe. Uh, but 1500 bucks. I, but here's the thing. I look at it and go, yeah, a little pricey. It's limited engagement. I mean, if they get all, if they put all the asses in the seats, they're going to make all the money. It right. goes right to a, a great cause. Now, if you don't want to attend, but you want to help out the, the Oklahoma City Art School for Girls, which we're going to tell you just a little bit more about. Uh, there is a link in the show notes. There are donation Yes, you can make avenues. donations. Absolutely, because of it is kind of a product of Oklahoma City Public Schools, but it's still a almost nearly a non-for-profit organization. But it's an after-school program for at-risk junior high, high school, elementary girls in the Oklahoma City Public School District, and their goal is to inspire with visual art. I think it's great. It sounds awesome. I'm all for the arts in the arts. In the arts, yes. Like you don't you don't get the value 
that this this brings. And, and it's as a kid that was kind of an art school kid himself, I think it's a great program. So. Right. I, one of the things that I've actually, you know, the whole STEM thing has been real popular in the media here lately. Apparently, they're trying to add arts into that, and instead of STEM, it is becoming STEAM. Yes, I, a lot of people, I I know people in the OKC and more schools that have their kids in the STEAM program, and they seem to really enjoy what those programs have to offer. So, Right. Definitely links in the show notes for all that. Do your part. Donate to art. Right, and when you're done donating to art, I think it's more than appropriate that you go like and subscribe and share this show, the only and OK show, with all your friends and family and yeah, we told you a week ago almost to tell your grandma about us. Have you, you done that yet? Your grandma has not called us yet, so you obviously have not told your grandma. No pocket dials even. Hello, you there? I haven't heard those. No. I'm pretty sure you can get a podcast on a jitterbug. You can. So let's get it done. Only an okay show on all of the things, everything's, all the technologies, all of the new newfangled gadgets. Just do it. It's the only an okay show. I'm Brett. And I'm Harley. 